Artificial intelligence has become the hot topic in new technology as new generative models have taken the world by storm. People seem to be amazed by the abilities of these tools, even if their capabilities have some obvious limitations at this point. Inevitably, it's always brought up that the hot new technology will be a great destroyer of jobs, as if AI has some magical plague-like effect that will swiftly eradicate millions of humans that have been doing menial tasks that can simply be automated away. Fear and anxiety around automation is nothing new. In 1589, Queen Elizabeth of England refused to grant the inventor of a mechanical knitting machine a patent, fearing it would put knitters out of work. In the last 400 years, things haven't changed much. According to Pew Research, a study they did in 2017 found that 72% of respondents expressed worry that robots and computers will take over many human jobs. All of this warrants the question, will AI simply erase jobs from existence, and will those former workers be left in the dust? A lot of fear around AI revolves around the idea known as lump of labor, which economists have shown empirically and historically is a fallacy. The lump of labor fallacy states that there's a fixed amount of work in the economy to be done. Under this idea, new jobs are not created, they're just redistributed to account for changes in the micro and macro economic environments. These fears are rooted in a mistaken zero-sum view of the economy and jobs which holds that when someone gains in a transaction, someone else loses. It's a tempting idea because it seems to be true. For example, jobs can be lost to automation and immigration. However, that is not the full story. In reality, the demand for labor is not fixed. Changes in one industry can be offset or overshadowed by growth in another industry. And as the labor force grows, total employment increases too. In the year 1900, 41% of the US workforce worked in agriculture. A hundred years later, after a century of technological change in that industry, only 2% of the US workforce works in agriculture. This transformation changed the work of farmers in dramatic ways, but it did not reduce the total employment in the United States. As it happens, the mechanization of agriculture in the early 20th century made possible the large increases in employment in new industry and factory jobs, a growing farm equipment industry, and cotton milling. So automation can be a substitute for labor, but it also is a complement to labor. In doing so, it raises output in ways that can increase increase the demand for labor. Because machines, robots, and artificial intelligence are completing tasks that have been performed by human workers, the lump of labor fallacy would say that automation displaces human workers and results in fewer jobs. In reality, some jobs or industries will be replaced by AI and automation improvements, but those technologies will clear the way for new problems to be addressed and new possible industries to be explored and expanded upon. And some jobs jobs will see AI as a complement, being a tool that allows them to increase their efficiency and productivity as a result of the computer's ability to execute tasks at a speed not capable of a human. So taking a step back, think of the economy as a giant pie. Under the lump of labor fallacy, the economic pie would be fixed. And as we've said, if AI is introduced, it will take away work from laborers. But if it were truly fixed, why then have populations grown over time? If the amount of jobs were fixed, then surely we could not accommodate the millions of people that have entered into the country and thus the economy. They would all be unemployed and starving. But we see that this is not the case because the economy is dynamic. It can grow and contract to the environment around it. People will always generate demand for goods. To accommodate those demands, firms will need to produce goods and services. As the demand increases, then more people will need to be hired to help produce those goods and services. Economies grow as productive resources such as labor or capital resources are added. More inputs increases the output produced. Economies also grow when productivity increases. That is, they grow when output per input increases. And make no mistake, 
most developed world economies have grown over time. Looking at the US GDP over the last couple of decades, we see that the GDP has grown significantly. To accommodate that growth, new industries and new jobs are added to support that productivity that adds to the top line GDP. So artificial intelligence might displace workers in a particular industry and might also contribute to rising productivity in that industry and thus grow the economy overall. The last supporting piece of data I will submit is the growing employee counts over the decades. If we were stuck in some sort of lump of labor, we would see a much flatter line than we have seen throughout history. If you enjoy economics like you do a good pie and you like your labor smooth rather than lumpy, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more economics content in the future. Okay, while on large it's easy to see that AI, like any disruptive tech we have seen over history, will not eliminate all our jobs forever, but there are some valid concerns to take a look at. First, every different industry or company will be affected differently. It's entirely possible that workers will be victims of AI replacement, especially in the short term. And that sucks for those particular employees. There's always stress around losing your job. And if AI were to totally wipe out an industry, like the dramatic reduction we saw in agricultural workers over the last century, then there would have to be a shift in those populations. In the long term, labor markets are dynamic. People can be retrained or their labor directed into industries that need it in a post AI world. In the short term, there's a lot of friction and people that are replaced can suffer until they find new work in a different spot. Additionally, you may have truly enjoyed your pre AI job and shifting to a new industry will bring you less satisfaction. Unfortunately, economic markets tend to care little about the enjoyment and satisfaction an employee receives from their work. They just care that work is completed in the first place. The best we can do is continue to train ourselves and our workforces to increase the human capital in the workplace. That will create a more versatile and flexible labor force. Lastly, I want to conduct a thought experiment assuming that the lump of labor fallacy is true. Let's assume that there is truly a fixed amount of work to be done in the economy. And let's assume that AI will continue to be developed to fully automate away the workforce. In our fictitious economy, there are no human workers left. Everything has been fully automated. If this is the case, let's also assume that America continues to maintain its uneven levels of wealth distribution. We have enacted no new socialist programs to supplement anyone's income or ways of living. So Jeff Bezos no longer employs 1.5 million people at Amazon. Instead, he just has robots that he and other Amazon shareholders are the only beneficiaries of their economic value. Well, under this economic model, you will have a large population that has no way to generate income. Without income, they will not be able to buy goods or services. If they can't buy goods or services, Amazon's customer base and demand is dramatically reduced, crashing the value of that company. In this example, there's no benefit to these large corporations to fully automate everything if there is no one able to buy their output. Unless these megacorps are able to buy and trade amongst themselves, you would have a very small set of owners that create a small economy amongst themselves. But because they would have everything they need for their small population of economic participants, there would be no incentive to produce exorbitant amount of goods beyond what they demand, and so their economic output would still decrease. Taken to this extreme example, it is fair to consider the consequences of such actions outside of the economic sphere. Countries have had revolutions, uprisings, and unrest due to the lack of food. If things were to get as truly dire as the situation that I described happened, it's fair to guess that some drastic measures might be considered by the displaced workforce. So with that, we can see that it's probably not realistic that AI is going to replace everyone's job. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider watching the one on the screen now. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.